welcome back and welcome to the completed Barometric Prognosticator 3 Steampunk weather machine. What it does is it uses a wireless weather detector that you put in the garden somewhere that measures temperature, humidity and pressure, sends the information via the ether to the prognosticator which records the results regularly and then uses them to calculate a weather forecast which it displays using one of five flickering lamps. It also stores all the information so that if you wish at any time, for example if I want to display the pressure changes over the last 24 hours, I can click that once, it'll then display the pressure 24 hours ago, play the flute and then move this depending on how the pressure has changed, it's been pretty stable. So it'll do that for pressure, humidity or temperature. In addition, each hour it will play a tune based on the last 24 hours of readings. Or you can get it to play a tune whenever you want by clicking it four times to the left. First it'll display or play a tune based on pressure. Then humidity. And then temperature. It also uses a radio control clock movement. So you never need to worry about adjusting the time or daylight saving changes or anything, it does it all for you. There's the lovely flickering power lamp which shows you that the prognosticator is receiving the steam or compressed air power that it requires. And it also has a PIR sensor so it will go to sleep if it doesn't see any movement for an hour. And then first thing in the morning or when you next get home it will wake up and play a tune. The biggest box of boxes I've ever seen arrive today, they're for the outside of the packaging for the barometric prognosticator. And this really has turned into one of those puzzles with one space because in order to get to the other box and away from this wretched fly, you can see I'm just having to move everything one step at a time. I'm going to have to move these boxes out of the way so I can try and slide one of the other boxes, the inner boxes, out of here. More room, you say? <laughs> no, to spoil the fun. So these boxes are 50 centimetres by 60 centimetres by 31 centimetres deep. And it's now got even more cramped. There's one of these boxes. And then these ones should be 120, uh, 12 centimetres bigger all round to allow for the new fill, the void fill. Now I used to use these start peanut shaped things. But I thought it'd be greener. In addition, the company I ordered the box from doesn't sell it. So, I have gone for these things. I can't remember what they call them. Scrunched up bits of paper. In some ways, it'll be better than the starch peanut things because when you squash them, they squash once and they never come back. They're not springy. Whereas these, and I want these to cushion, the void fill to cushion the drop of the outside box or anything so that the machine inside doesn't get damaged. I think these would be great. Well, we'll find out in a couple of days. Cramped doesn't really describe it. There's the prognosticator 3. And in order just to try and get the boxes together, I, I now can't actually move in any particular direction, just round in the circles. And I'll edge my way around there and try and build this back up over in that corner. Although quite what I'm going to do with this big box of boxes, I have absolutely no idea. I don't think I can find anywhere that it will fit. The wireless system really is quite marvellous. Here's the one I've had running for five or six years, and I've just unplugged the battery. Here's the one I'm going to send off with number eight. 
just put the battery in, pressed reset, and I'm going to now go and just check to confirm that it all works and everything. So to do that, I'm going to switch this one off, and I'm going to switch it back on again. You can see how it fades up, even though I've got, I've got automatic camera settings, but you can see it fading up, and then what it'll do is to play the national anthem, or a vague rendition of it, so that you know that everything's working. Just finding zero with the read switch. And then it's going to wait. And as you can see, none of these weather forecast lamps are flickering yet. And it's going to wait until it receives a proper signal from the wireless weather detector. And then it should play. Oh, look at that. Brilliant. That's amazing what's going on behind the scenes. <laughs> it's crazy. So now, very dry, I would concur. Now it's going to start collecting and recording all the weather data. Excellent. So that wireless weather detector works perfectly. Would you, Adam and Eva, just putting all this away, the photography bit, stacking these nice big bits of wood up and knocked the new prognosticator 3 and managed to scratch a little blemish on the side of the PIR sensor. What a pain. So, had to wrap it all up, surround it with pictures of semi-clad people and respray that one little bit, but perfection is my watchword. Committed to, etc, etc. Now, the way I'm going to fix it into the box, the inner one, is I've drilled four pilot holes, one in each corner on the back into the nice thick bit of wood inside and I'm going to screw it into the box. The problem being how to find out where these holes go on the other side of the box. I've drawn round it, the pipe was a bit tight so I've cut a hole in the side so that the pipe can go through the box, come back out and in again. These two bits of wood are just to make sure that these end flaps don't push down too much, I'm sure they won't. And the point is I need to know where to put four holes because I need to glue some reinforcing wood on the outside to make sure that screws don't pull through cardboard. Da, da, da drawing pins and masking tape suddenly realised. There we are, the wonders of a drawing pin and some masking tape. Now I can lower all this into the box very carefully, now I know where it's positioned, and hopefully end up with four little marks. It seems to be working. Well it should do because I use this for the other smaller machines as well. So there it is sitting in there. I can then put the screws in from underneath and it's also the way you remove it as well, sit it on a tabletop, it means that one person can do it. And there we have it, very pleased with this. I've got that screw to the back with the four screws and the wooden plates to support that. Loose loop cable tie there so that that can't, for some reason, if it gets knocked, move around and knock into anything. At the moment it's just free, it's not touching anything. We have the connector pipe coming through here because it's a little bit tight. Back in there, more cable ties to stop it wibbling at them, wobbling a bit. And then we have the weather detect wireless weather sensor there, the plug in USB adapter, and so two rule plugs and two wide headed screws to hang it on. And that is wrapped in bubble wrap and then cable tied there and there. Because the thing is, originally I thought, well, I'd put the power adapter in the corner with a cable tie around it. It could feasibly have come loose in transit and then it would have just been a projectile happily rattling around here, scratching all the paint, destroying it. So even if it came loose, which it won't because it's got two cable ties now, it's all wrapped in plastic. Same with this to stop the spring and the chain from constantly bouncing around in transit. I've wrapped it with some bubble wrap just to hold it in place. And there's a couple of bits of the foam behind here to stop that wobbling and to stop the dial turning. Yet yeah, the, the bellows is all wrapped up nicely and another bit of this foam here to hold the hammer so that's not rattling around clanging. So I am finally pleased with that. Why have a plain box when you can cover it with useful top tips and things? keep thinking of more stuff to add but I must stop now. 
there's a huge box that the smaller box is going to go into and we're now ready to do that nicely glued and taped together it's about seven and a half centimeters available at the bottom I think I'll leave it at that and just see how much space it's left at the top once I put that in all full packed all round very nicely cushioned so I'll get that sealed up with the use of both hands amazing how much you actually use it's about just under half the box but I'm very impressed it really does make a springy cushion, doesn't compress and stay compressed, I'm very pleased with that.